Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. I'm in the book of Mark, the 10th chapter, and I'm somewhere around uh, verse number seven, and it's two small verses. And, and let me just say this early on, these verses that Jesus is quoting, share it. Don't play it. The, the verses that, that Jesus quotes, he's actually quoting them from Genesis, the second chapter, which we will visit in a few also. Um, but if you can look at the seventh verse of the 10th chapter of the book of Mark, if you can go there with me and and, and it goes something like this. I'm reading from the, the King James Version and then it goes a little something like this. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And the twain, or the two, or the both of them, shall be one flesh. Somebody say one flesh. So then they are no more two, but one flesh. Somebody say one flesh flesh one flesh one flesh uh, uh, real quickly I, I want to use that for our theme tonight most have probably gotten the uh, text update about this message but today I would like to talk just for a, a couple of moments moments concerning this topic one flesh one flesh uh, uno carne I can get away with that all right, all right, I have to ask my, uh, <laughs> I have to ask my uh, interpreter here, my ESL uh, teacher, uh, uh, somewhere I'm like that. Okay, Josh, thank you. So, so <laughs> uno carne, amen. If you notice anything, something, something, something was interesting this week, and um, it'll give you context of the text right here in Mark the 10th chapter. And, and, and Mark the 10th chapter, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It almost parallels what happened this week, Dave. If most of you got a chance to watch the uh, Democratic debates, the presidential candidates uh, had debates this week. Uh, I think this is interesting that every time there's a big debate leading up to the election, right? When we have an election year, it's interesting because uh, we, the viewers or the people, we would like to think that what's going to be discussed is what is dear and what is important to the people. We would like to think that we will hear uh, uh, where each candidate stands as far as uh, tax cuts, right, and, 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 and tax hikes, and, and, and where do you stand as far as uh, what is your plan uh, to reduce the unemployment rate, and, and, and where do you stand on universal health care and things like that. So we have these candidates debating one another, whether it's uh, the presidential debate that we'll see somehow by the, by the fall of 2020, and, and, and all of a sudden, while they're, while they're having these debates, Somebody slips a question in out of nowhere that has nothing to do with what the people want to know, right. has nothing to do with what the two sides are debating about. But the only reason that they slip the question in is to somewhat attack the person that they're debating with. Uh, that brings us to the text here in Mark the 10th chapter. In Mark the 10th chapter, Jesus has gone to Judea and he's here near the Jordan River and he just got through preaching an awesome message and an awesome sermon. People are coming up and getting delivered. They're getting healed. They're, they're, they're receiving the word of the Lord. And out of nowhere, one of, one of his opponents, out of one, nowhere, the, the scripture says the Pharisees challenged Jesus Jesus with a question out of nowhere that had nothing to do with the Jordan River, had nothing to do with Judea, had nothing to do with the gospel, had nothing to do with the preaching, but it was just a way for Jesus' opponents to strip Jesus up and to get him to, to, to persecute himself. Says Jesus, crazy question, nothing to do with the subject. You got a co-worker like that? Jesus. Got a question for you. Uh, 
what do you feel about divorce? I like this scripture because because Jesus here, uh, uh, they wanted to gauge where Jesus was on the issue. If you know anything about the text here, uh, uh, history shows that there were two rabbinical uh, organizations at the time. There was the 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 Shimei organization and the Halil organization. Each one of those organizations viewed the response to the divorce question differently. The uh, Halil, uh, their response for divorce and what they believe for the reasons to have a divorce. Uh, they believe that you could have a divorce on any grounds that you thought was important to you. The Shimei, they, they viewed divorce that, that, that the reason that, that it was okay or acceptable for one to get a divorce is, watch this, this I'm not making this up y'all, was, was they believed that if you found someone else that was prettier uh -huh, than your current wife, that that was enough grounds to get a divorce. I'm so glad we don't live in that era. I would have been dumped a long time ago, amen? And, and, and so the other thing that they could, the the shimei, the, that they believe that you could divorce somebody for is if you found somebody prettier or, watch this, I ain't making this up, y'all, or if your wife couldn't cook. Some of y'all would have been lonely for a very, very long time. So they walk up on Jesus and essentially the Pharisee says, now, now, Jesus, what do you feel about divorce? You're either a Halil state of mind or you got a Shimei state of mind. Which, which persuasion are you from? What, what do you believe? Ooh, but I love Jesus' answer, y'all. I, I love how Jesus deals with the text. I, I love Jesus' response to his critics. I love Jesus' response to the people that like to spew hatred at his direction. Jesus answers it like this. He says, what does Moses say? I love that. Jesus, why would you throw Moses under the bus. Why are you bringing Moses into the conversation? They, they want to know what you think about divorce, not what Moses thinks about divorce, not what Abraham thinks about divorce, not what Lot, Lot thinks about divorce, not what Isaac or Jacob or Elijah thinks about divorce. They want to know what Jesus, son of Mary, what do you feel about divorce? Jesus says, what did Moses say? You got to understand why Jesus went there because Jesus understands that the writer of the Pentateuch of the first five books of the Bible, the writer of Genesis is Moses. Jesus essentially says, what did Moses write about creation concerning man and woman? And well, this is what we got to stop for a minute because I like this. Jesus doesn't play that game with his adversaries. I got a word for somebody. When somebody wants to trip you up uh-huh when somebody looks to get you involved in trumped up charges don't you play that game with them no you don't understand y'all are players and I'm coaching y'all I got my own set of rules and I don't have to drop down to play by your rules I dictate how I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do and when I'm gonna do it can I get somebody to say yes right I said no what did Moses say since y'all so smart and you profess to have the law understood, won't you tell me what Moses said? Like this because this is what you have to read between the lines too. Also, you, you gotta look at this. Jesus says, I'm not gonna answer you about divorce, but what I want you to do is read what Moses says as it pertains to man and female. Let's see what the book says about the, re the first relationship. Uh huh. We're not going to talk about how I feel about relationships that have been broken up from this point on. He said, no, let's talk about how the first relationship came together in the first place. So we got to travel back to Genesis. The second chapter. Y'all, we got to go back to the book of beginnings. Let's, let's walk our way through the garden, y'all. Y'all want to walk with me through the garden, amen? I uh, hope you are not scared of garden snakes or snails or crickets, amen? But let's walk back. 
to the garden. And we're here in, in Genesis, the second chapter. And, and first of all, we, 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 we see that we, we see how the parameters or the boundaries are there described for human sexuality in the first book, y'all. We see here uh, that human sexuality is a partnership between, come on now, I need you to applaud, between one man and one woman. I needed an applause on that. Oh, okay, all right, all right. We got some liberal people here today, okay. I understand, you just came back from the pride parade and you don't wanna speak up about it because you're, okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, a, a man and woman, when we look at the original context, the original context at the first relationship, man and woman were put here to help each other. Not to rule, oh, come on, not to rule over one another, Sylvia, but the reason that God gave a man a woman and gave woman a man was so that they could help one another. Somebody say partnership. Let me just say this, in the beginning, God made genders. You got my back right here? In the beginning, God was the one that made genders. God is a, he's a gender specific God. Uh -huh. There ain't no challenging with God. It, there is no co-ed bathrooms with God. God made male and, and made female. That's, he's a gender specific God. There was no confusion in the mind of God. There was no confusion when he spoke lives into existence. God knew he made, a, he made Adam and God knew that he made Eve. He made then man and one man and one man. Uh, 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 listen to this, he, he formed the first man Adam from dust, no pun intended prophet. He, the first man was, was formed from dust and he breathed life into him. And I, I gotta stop right this because man was made from dust. I gotta help you sisters out because some of you sisters got the nerve to call, to, to, to say that all brothers do is, is think dirty minded. I gotta tell you, we do think dirty minded. We were created from the dust. All men think dirty, and all dogs go to heaven. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. Get this next part, though. I'm going somewhere with this. Scripture says that when Eve was created, Adam was asleep. Oh, y'all going to see me in a minute. I, I, I like the word sleep there because uh, the, the word sleep there in Hebrew means to stupefy or it means a trance or or it means to be unconscious uh, and, and essentially this I love this part right here uh, 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 essentially when when he makes woman man is asleep can I say this on behalf of the men to all the women you're right Men don't have a clue as to how women are created. We were sleep. We were sleep. Oh, but can I, can I say this, throw this at you too, Stephanie? Uh, uh, women don't know how men are created either. You wasn't here yet. So sitting here and, and, and the woman, though, we get to the, the woman because the man's sleeping. And, and the woman, watch this, she didn't come from the dust. Uh-uh. The man, the one man was built or created by the hands of God. You, you have, when I look at my wife sometimes and, and I look at all, <laughs> I start speaking in a known tongue, amen. And, and when I look at this stuff, I, I realize that God did some of his best work, amen. He did some some of his best work while I was asleep, amen. Man comes from dirt, dirty minded and dust, but a woman was created with the hands of God. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Brothers, can I get you to say, thank you, Lord. And sit here and, and, and it makes sense now makes sense because he goes and puts Adam, says, listen, uh, uh, Adam, I'm going to put you to sleep. 
uh, cause I'm gonna take my time. God, God takes his time when creating a woman. He says, I'm gonna have to take my time, Janet, when it comes to making a woman. So, so you go ahead and be sleep for a while. A uh, 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 dozen, oh God, you gonna hate me for this women. Adam is sleep. He's in a, he's in a deep sleep so he can't see or hear anything. And he's, he's there for a while. It took God forever to make a woman. It, 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 it's no, it doesn't, it makes sense now, doesn't it, fellas, that it, it takes forever for a woman to get ready sometimes, don't it? They started off like that. You ain't got to say amen, Stephanie. Amen. Maybe that's just my house. But the women, come on, just, 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 just wink at me, Dave. The women take the longest to get ready. Can I tell you something? God started that process off early. Sitting here. Sitting here and, and, and looking at the text. God removes one rib from Adam. He takes he takes one rib and he he uses that one rib to fashion to fashion the woman he 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 removes one rib from Adam and makes a woman I, I'm so glad I don't know about you fellas but but I'm so glad that he took one rib and made one woman could you imagine if God would have took four or five ribs when Adam woke up he would have seen four or five women so he sits here in a and I like this. I want y'all to catch this. The word rib here, when you look it up in Hebrew, means a beam. The same type of beam that's used in construction. The, the, the same type of beam that you use when you build a house. Essentially, watch this. The Lord started to deal with me on this. Essentially, when God makes a woman, he makes a woman so that she provides structure to a man's life. Did you, did you catch that? Without a woman in your life, brother, you got no structure. What, without a woman in your life, you ain't got a plan. What, without a woman in your life, we are clueless at best. I'm so glad that God gave us structure when he gave us a woman. You didn't have that woman in your life, bro. You would fold like a lawn chair, eh, man? Essentially, this is what happens. Sit here. And according to human anatomy, I, I, I like the human anatomy. The human anatomy lets me know that the ribs, the ribs are responsible for keeping the body held up. Did y'all know that? Uh huh. The ribs are also responsible uh, for protecting the heart. Can, can, can I say this? If, if you a rib in the room, you shouldn't uh, be beating up on the heart. If, if you a rib in a room, you shouldn't be attacking your man's heart. Why? Because your first call and assignment is to protect his heart. <laughs> Sitting here, we look at the, at the, at the scripture here, and, and, and the scripture lets us know that, that essentially, because a woman was created from a man's rib, that a woman, let history show, has been standing side by side with a man from day one. You catch that? You got to go home and treat Dan Danielle a little bit different. Say, boo, you've been by my side from day one. This is also true too, prophet, that a woman, has been a pain in our side from day one. Been a pain in our side. It's recorded. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get no many amens on that. Uh-huh. And this is where it gets tricky. This is where you get tricky for a woman because let me just say this. Uh, uh, as it pertains to a woman, a woman, you, you need to know this, that, that when it comes to your man, your man will never have it all together. He will never be perfect. He will never walk on water. He will never be the, 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 the same type of man that you see when you watch The Bachelor. Uh-huh. He's never going to be that type of dude. Why? Because God made it that a man is always missing a rib. The man came into this world and was set up that he's always been missing something since God created a woman. Don't you understand? You are the key piece to a man's life. I know he sat there and talked mess about you and said, I could do better with you. I know you get distracted. Distracted and, and you get aggravated sometimes because you feel like all I'm good for is sex, cooking, and cleaning up and watching your kids. But I got to tell you, it's more than that. If you're not there, that man is missing something. <laughs> Sitting here and 
this is the problem we have. And this is the issue that we get in, Josh, when it comes to same-sex relationships. I, I, I got to go there. And, and this is the problem where it gets a little tricky because I, I understand, brother, that you have fell madly in love for another brother. I, I, I understand that. You, 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 you think that that other brother has his money in order. You, you think that the other brother has, I don't know, the type of hair that you're looking for. You, you, you think that that other brother has, has the type of qualities to be a soulmate that you've always yearned for. Brother, there's only one problem with you falling in love with another brother. He can never provide a rib. In order for you to have a complete relationship that reflects the first relationship between man and woman, somebody has got to provide a rib for every man. I didn't think I'd get very many amens on that. Uh, brings us to our key scripture. Uh, uh, this is what I like about it. Uh, uh, before we move on, uh, it brings us to our key scripture. Before we get there, this is what I like about it is God, God, I like, I like this. God closes up Adam's flesh. And I ask myself, why of a scripture? Why, why, why did you make sure that Adam's flesh was closed? Because well, you don't need more than one rib at a time. Uh, that's, that's essentially why God has to put his flesh back together. You can only deal with one rib at a time. You can't deal with losing another rib. You can't deal with missing a third rib. But you can only deal, somebody say, one rib, one rib. at a time. Brings us to our key scripture. You can go to Mark the 10th chapter or you can meet me in Genesis the second chapter, verse number 24. They're identical in what, they about, or what they're about to say. It says it like this. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall, receive, and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Somebody say one flesh. And that here is... It's where God has betwixt me. This is here where we have our situation uh, for the day. Is that God has made it so that man leaves his father and his mother to cleave and make one flesh. The Lord began to talk to me and deal with me on this. It's, it's everybody's responsibility, man and woman, to leave, here, get this, to leave the tribe that you were a part of in order to cling to your new tribe. And that's where God stopped me today. And that's where we have the problem at with this generation. This generation has no problem with hooking up and clinging to somebody new. They keep clinging to any and everybody. They keep clinging to new relationships from one relationship to another relationship. Every time you look around, they're clinging to somebody new. But the problem is they cling to new people, but they still haven't left the old relationship. Bible gives specific steps. If you're going to cling to a new relationship, if you're going to cling and become one with somebody's flesh, if you're going to cling to somebody's new, you've got to leave the old relationship. And maybe you, I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe you still haven't left the old relationship. Why do I know that you haven't left the old relationship? Because you still keep talking about what your mom and your dad have done to you. How do I know that you haven't left the old relationship because you still keep bringing up your ex's name and it's going on 20 years since y'all been apart if you're going to cling to a new relationship you got to leave the old one behind somebody say just leave just leave so I'm sitting here, we, we deal with the whole plus one mentality. You know how it is when you, when you are trying to uh, uh, RSVP for something and they, they ask you, is it you and you have a plus one? Uh, th that's the problem. We keep clinging to somebody new, but because we haven't left somebody old, we're clinging to them plus one. We're clinging to somebody new plus two. We're clinging to somebody plus three. But because I haven't cut 
off my old ties. I'm one plus one that equals a thousand. So I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm getting to the end of it. I'm getting to the end of it. You cling. The word cling there is also a celebration. It's the celebration of you leaving your last tribe. It's part of a celebratory act that I'm moving on to some things new and something new. And, and I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the text and you have to understand what happens. The act of becoming one flesh with somebody, the act of having one flesh for somebody to hold on to in their life. It speaks to this, uh, uh, that essentially a person is hooking up with somebody else. Eventually a person, a man has to hook up with a woman and become one flesh I, I, I messed up I was messed up on this because essentially this is what God does he says this in scripture read it on your own time he says essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a woman out of your flesh watch this I'm going to close up your flesh and then you're going to become you're going to turn around come back together and become one flesh I said it doesn't make sense you lay me down to sleep open my flesh to take a rib out to create flesh, close up flesh, and then tell me go back and become one flesh. But when you think about it in theory, it makes a lot of sense. Essentially, the goal of God is for us to all come back together as one. I got to come back and become one flesh. Why? She has my rib. It's important for me to come back, my soul, my spirit, my body yearns a woman because she has my rib. I have a problem with the homosexual community in this aspect. Your soul is invented by God from the beginning as a man to only have a rib that will fulfill your needs. And though he might be cute and his dreads might be long, you'll never find a rib in that person. Oh, well, well, well I, got to, I got to preach this too. Uh, uh, as it pertains to uh, uh, my sisters of homosexuality, uh-huh, uh-uh. Two ribs can't bump together at the same time. I know, you're gonna pray for me, right? Why? Because it's formed that a rib is somewhere I need to deposit this rib in somebody's life. And as for a woman, in order for me to be whole, I have to put this rib back in its original place. Sex is the, is the physical and, and emotional celebration of our bodies and soul coming back together. I'm putting my rib back in place. Which says this, brothers, that, that in order to have a good relationship with my woman, Jordan, uh, I literally have to give a piece of myself to her. God set it up that, that in order for my relationship to be tight with my woman, she has to have a piece of me. I'm preaching to some people that don't want to open up your life. I'm, I'm preaching to some people that want to remain guarded about your past and, and that want to be standoffish. You will always have screwed up relationships. You will always have a skewed up view of coupleism. I just made that word up. Of coupleism. As long as you stay guarded, the role of a man is that you need to have a piece of me in order for this thing to work, y'all. One flesh. This is God's blueprint for sexuality. One flesh. One flesh. Uno carne. Stand to your feet. One flesh. Well, you don't understand. I've tried the relationship thing out and I, I haven't been successful in it. I, I'm here to pray for people that have, that feel, they feel, you feel, we don't feel, you feel like you have relationship failure syndrome. Let me just tell you something. God put it in you to have stickability in any relationship you get into. Why? We were made in his image. One flesh. Maybe, maybe it's this. Have we considered this that maybe I have not found the right person whose life that I fit into, or vice versa. I haven't found the right person that fits into my life. 
I, I, I'm telling you that it's God's plan for everybody to fit along that mode and with that blueprint of one flesh. Jesus, let's get back to Jesus. Jesus then stands there and says, when you get this concept, you'll never ever talk to me about where I stand on the issue of divorce. Just get the concept about original relationships down in the first place and you won't ask me, he's talking to the Pharisees, you won't ask me another stupid question like that. Who am I preaching to right now? Hello, we want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.